from Service UK and on this week's show I'm going to show you something slightly different uh, in the fact that we're going to take a beast in the field and then bring it back, skin it off and then butcher it all in preparation for a summer barbecue. Okay, so I'm going to skin off this robot that I've just brought in and then I'm going to hand it over to Anthony Coates who's going to do a demonstration on how to strip the carcass down into lovely summer cuts so you can put them on the barbecue and enjoy the most beautiful meat that is the robot. Yeah, we'll give him, uh, give him a few days in the fridge to set up and then we'll butcher him later in the week. Wonderful. Right then, I'll get this off then. Okay, that's that finished now. Uh, I'm going to put that in the chiller for three or four days uh, so the meat can mature. And then Anthony is going to show you what to do with regards to stripping it down for the barbecue. Good evening. Tonight we're going to butcher a roe deer that was shot a week ago down in the Cotswolds. It's been skinned and cleaned and hanging in our cold store for a week and as it's the summer we're going to concentrate on barbecue style cuts things that are quick to prepare and quick to cook and don't take too much specialist kit to prepare although we're working in a professional butcher's shop we're not going to use equipment that you can't easily get to hand at home <coughs> what we'll start with is the legs Work down through the loins to make nice fillets to fry. The shoulder, you can do casseroles, but given the time of year, we're going to be popping that through the mincing machine and seasoning that for a few burgers and keeping it as simple as possible. <coughs> so here we go. Okay, we're going to start by removing the shoulders, and I do this similar to a lamb just behind the shoulder blade. We feel for the shoulder blade and as that fades away we cut through and the only piece of kit really is a decent saw and a sharp knife. That's the shoulders off which we'll come back to later and then on the legs we can feel the bone the hip bone, where the hip bone finishes and the loin starts, there we can make our cut to remove the loins. And there's the three, <coughs> the three main components of the carcass. So before we get too far into it, we're going to mention Check the carcass for contamination caused by spillage of gut content from the shot and um, <clears throat> sometimes they're dressed in the field in the dark and it's not possible to get a perfect, perfectly clean carcass. So we'll trim anything out as we go that's not suitable. Okay, we're going to make a start <clears throat> on removing the loins. As it's quite a small deer, we're going to concentrate just on the eye meat. There'll be a bit of waste up here on the breast, but no, no great quantity. So keeping tight to the ribs, we're going to work our way down to the loin. <coughs> I 
like to use long, steady cuts. This side we've got a little bit more damage. It's been trimmed off previously. The only specialist kit I've got is a decent quality chainmail glove. This we can use in our burgers. Here there's a bit of damage to trim off. And again, just under the membrane on the outside. It leaves us with two nice fillets, which we need to remove from by making a shallow cut underneath and holding the holding some tension on the second one just remove this thicker part on the back slip the knife underneath Membrane. This leaves us two nice fillets that we can portion. We can fry these or barbecue them or grill them, season them with rubs, anything you can buy in a quality shop, doesn't need anything. Salt and pepper, garlic, you name it, anything you can think of. Okay, now we're just going to start on the shoulders and I always like to check in between the muscles for hemorrhaging that occurs when the animal is shot and this one is, is in great condition so there's no worries there. I'm going to start at the breastbone and work my way round to the spine. We're keeping the knife tight to the bone which is the butcher's golden rule. But on this in this case, it doesn't have to be perfect because we're going to mince this all together later with some seasoning. So we're just following the natural shape of the bone down into the neck. If it was winter, we'd probably castor all this, but hopefully we'll be doing this on the barbecue at the weekend. This one. Here I'm using the weight of the meat to cause it to fall away from the bone. There are 
like two little fillets in the shoulder <coughs> that we call the neck fillets, which will cook on the barbecue. So we're going to steal those out. They peel away. I like to discard the piece near the neck, as I believe it's not quite so tender. There's one portion. And here's the other. This is the same muscle that we prepared earlier from the loins that runs the full length of the animal. Here the neck end, we're going to take away. There's a small gristle in the back, which we remove. Check that one. And there's two more portions that we can do on the barbecue. We start at one end. two shoulders that we boned out a moment ago, just removing this fat, there's one or two blood vessels in there which we don't want in the finished product, this one's fine, check for the hemorrhaging that we mentioned earlier, not the best eating, that's clear, that's happy with that one, here we've got this layer of fat that carries these blood vessels which we want to remove. It doesn't matter if you nick the meat here because it's all going to be minced. So now we're building up a nice collection that we can mince at the end of the job. Now we come to the third and final major part of the carcass, the hindquarters or the haunch or the back legs various names for it. it can be used for joints or steaks but tonight we're going to prepare it for steaks and any trim we shall add to our burger. We're just removing any little bits of damage. So we've trimmed away any bits that we don't want and we'll make a saw cut through the bone, the H bone and the back bone to give us the two legs. joint 
concentrating on the ends so the bone rolls away and then down the backbone from the tail and let the meat fall away using gravity to help you. I'm going to remove the shim, the rear part, there's a joint here. through. Again in the winter we may casserole this piece but today it's going to be used for burgers. Removing what we call the top side now. So we make a cut along the length of the femur bone, the main leg bone, and we find a natural seam in the muscles here which we follow. nice small stakes. We could remove the bone and put string around for a joint to roast a haunch. But for today's purposes we're going for smaller cuts. <clears throat> Again there's another seam here which we can find. Naturally opens up. So we've got three parts the leg and the shin. side off. vegetables obviously. You can season with anything that you happen to have in the cupboard. Now the last job of the evening is to quickly mince this. Luckily we've got the benefit of an industrial mincing machine today but it will go through the mincing attachment on a good quality household mixer. And this really is the very last job of the evening. We've got the minced meat here, super and lean. They're going to make fantastic little burgers. I'm just going to add a small amount of water. It's not an exact science, we don't want too much. And then I just happened to pick this out of the kitchen cupboard. It is a jar of Chinese five spice that we can buy in any shop. There's possibly eight or ten pounds of meat there. I'm going to be brave and put the whole lot in and then mix by hand and the more we mix this the better it'll start to release the proteins in the meat give us a burger that should stay together nicely when it's cooked we can form these burgers by hand just rolling it out and they can be placed onto a frying pan flattened down with a spatula 
these can be made up and then frozen for use at a later date. We're just now popping these steaks into some freezer bags. Standard freezer bags available from anywhere. And I would happily keep this in the freezer for three to six months, no problem at all. Three generations of butchers and one of only a handful in the UK to actually um, have an abattoir at the back, processing plant, and then bring it through and sell it in their chain of shops.